own words. Just, he's so faithful. He's so good. He, he's worthy of all praise. You know, if I can just take this time to encourage. You know, and nowadays in our society, in our world, there's so much craziness going on. There's just so much uncertainty, so much just insanity. And sometimes it's so easy to focus on all the problems that's going on that sometimes we kind of forget who God is in our life and what he has done, what he's capable of. Sometimes we forget that breakthroughs are still happening. Can I tell you that breakthroughs are still happening in church? Sometimes we can forget that miracles are still happening. God is still in the business of miracles, church. God's presence is here. Sometimes we can forget that God, you know, God is not, he hasn't left you. Like he said, he'll never leave you or he'll forsake you. His promises remain the same. So instead of focusing on our problems, let's focus on the one who can take care of all our problems and endeavor some. Let's focus on the one who's created. Let's focus on the one who holds the world in his hands, church. Amen. Be encouraged by that. I love that song. Whatever you might be going through this morning, be encouraged. God sits on the throne and he holds the world in his hands. And whatever it is that you need from him, he'll come through like he always does. Your breakthrough is coming. Your miracle is coming. And we believe that right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys can have be seated, but before you do, please greet each other in the name of the Lord. Um, so happy to see everyone here this morning here at Sanctuary. Amen. Amen. Happy New Year, church family. Oh, I hope I'm so excited for this upcoming year. Um, the temptation is there to say the obligatory lame, you know, oh, I haven't seen you guys since last year, Joe. <laughs> but I'm going to be defined this morning. I'm not going to do that because I want to be a part of the solution, not the problem. So I'm not going to do it this morning. I'm not going to do it. But I'm just so happy to see you here, and what a great way to kick off the year than to be in the house of the Lord with other um, like-minded believers and just being with you here this morning. And I'm so grateful for, I'm always happy when a new year comes because whatever will happen in 2022, the ups and downs, that's in the past. You know, whatever new challenges come in this new year, whatever new opportunities, whatever new things that come along, one thing remains the same, and that's God's goodness, His grace, His love, and His mercy. And whatever you may go through this year, good or bad, God's holding you. He holds the future in His hands, and He's always holding your hands every step of the way. So uh, be encouraged in that. I'm so excited for this morning, so excited for the word, what God has brought to Pastor Tony um, for this new year, and uh, for this new day, and this new year. And um, we're going to go ahead in this service and we're going to worship God in our giving. And this is such a blessed church. And I'm so thankful for this church and I'm believing that God has big things for this church move forward, more blessings. And part of that reason is because we're a giving church. Uh, we give of our time. We give of our efforts. Amen. Yeah, y'all can clap for yourself. Hey, absolutely. And uh, we give of our resources. And when we give, that's when we're being more like Jesus. Amen. So I encourage everyone this morning, um, whatever it is you have to give um, in your tithes and your offerings, whatever God has put on your heart, uh, please do so. And um, God will bless you. You know, there's, <laughs> I don't have any other magic word I'm going to say that God will continue to be faithful as long and if we continue to be faithful to him and his church and his kingdom. Amen. So uh, there's many ways that you can give. Um, you can give online, Sanctuary uh, Church Longwood website. Um, you can give on the Church Center app, um, or we have buckets on your far left row of your seat. Um, you can pass the bucket down and give through that, or we have black boxes um, that you can put your offering through there. Many ways to give, many ways. We love variety around here, amen. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pray. Uh, ushers, you guys can go ahead and uh, move forward and uh, pray over the offering, and then we'll continue in our service. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this day. Lord, thank you for letting us see another brand new year, oh God. Um, we're just so thankful for your love and your mercy and grace that you show us every single day. I pray for each and every person in this room, oh God, that you touch them and you bless them. Open up doors, oh God, that haven't been opened yet, oh God. Bless them like you've never blessed them before, oh God. 
bless this church like you've never blessed this church. Let us see you move in 2023 like we've never seen you move before, oh God. We're praying and believing that right now here in our church, in our community, in our state, our country, and in the world, oh God. We just trust and believe in you, oh God. And we're just so thankful, God. May your kingdom be furthered. May people be reached and impacted, oh God, because of this church and, and, and what we do here. And we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. The church says, Amen. So go ahead and give him. We have some announcements for you. Please pay attention to the screen. Happy New Year, everyone. My name is Lisa Smotty, and I serve in young adults and a Sunday morning coordinator. We're so glad you've been with us today as we kick off the new year. Before you go, here's a few ways to connect here at Sanctuary Law Club. Here at Sanctuary Church, we'll be diving into 2023 with excitement over all God has in store for our church in the new year. Each Saturday in January, we will open the sanctuary at 9 a.m. for a time of prayer, and we'll be kicking off 21 days of prayer and fasting next Sunday, January 8th. This is a huge opportunity for us to commit the year to God and prepare ourselves to receive His very best for us as individuals and as a church. We really encourage you to check it out and ask God how He wants you to be a part. You can get more informed dates and ideas on the Church Center app. Also on January 8th, we invite you to be part of the growth track. If you're new to our sanctuary community or you just want to know a little more about what we are and what we do, growth track is just for you. There will be free food and an interactive time discovering the ins and outs of our ministry. Plus, you might learn something new about yourself too. If you have questions, stop by guest services. And if you're ready to sign up, you can use the Church Center app. Let's get ready to believe, belong, and become together. Finally, the Sanctuary family is committed to serving the city of Longwood, and one of the ways we do that is by participating in community events. The Longwood National Night Out will be taking place Tuesday, January 17, 2023, from 5.30 to 8 p.m. at Candyland Park. We'll be playing games with the kids, handing out treats, and representing our church in the community. We'd love for you to come represent and show the city that our church is a great place to call home and a great family to call your own. Sign up on the Church Center app to join your team. There's always something happening here at Sanctuary Rockwood, so be sure to follow us across social media to stay connected. We love you. God bless you. Let's have an amazing new year together. Sanctuary Church. I need you to say those words with me. Say, be the new. Oh my goodness, how many times do we sit here on New Year's Day and we say, Lord, I need something new. God, I need you to do something fresh. I need something to change in my life. And then we sit there and just wait for it to just happen. And, and, and like, like, like it's, it's just going to be some, some kind of like, like a, a, an environmental change, but we get the comfort of staying exactly the same. Lord, change my circumstances, change my situation, change my life, change my resources, change everything but me. Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's going to be that kind of day, kids. Christmas is over. I don't have to be jolly anymore. <laughs> Man, I got that wrapping paper tossed out, got them holiday. Listen, we sent Aunt Edna back home to Michigan. We are done with Christmas. My Disney Pass blackout's about to end, and we're, we're getting back to real life. How about you? How, how was your Christmas? Everybody good? You're in the, for those of you that are in the house today, congratulations. You survived New Year's Eve, and you showed up to church nonetheless. You, you are the champions, my friends. 
And for those of you that are watching at home, thank you also for being with us today in, in your own way. Um, we're, we're so grateful that for all of us who are participating and being a part of this. So pull out your quick, your holiday bingo card. I just want to get a quick feel of, of how you guys are doing with this thing. Who has taken down their tree? Who's checked that off? Who, your tree is down, it's done, it's boxed up. So that means that most of you do not have your tree down. Okay, that's all right. We, we don't judge here. It's okay. How many of you guys have thrown away your Christmas leftovers? How many of y'all still got them sneaking in the fridge? Like, I don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't know if that, that, it could still be good, right? You just scrape that green part off. It'll still be fine. A little slime on the turkey ain't never hurt nobody. How many of y'all have gone back to the mall since Christmas? The no man's land demilitarized zone of the mall when you got it going there. Now, I don't know if, if pre-holiday shopping, pre-Christmas shopping, I like less, or post-Christmas shopping, I like less. But I like one of them less, I'm not sure. <laughs> I just try to avoid the mall. Uh, how about this? Who went to the store and loaded up on 70% off holiday candy? Now I feel like you're judging me. Don't act like, don't act like those Reese's peanut butter trees are not the best ratio of chocolate to peanut butter that exists in the world. They perfected it. They give it to us three times a year in the form of trees and eggs and pumpkins. And it's, if we don't go get them when they're 70% off, how do we expect God to bless us in this new year? <laughs> okay. I am glad. I'm grateful for a new year. I'm grateful for 2023. I'm grateful for 2023 in particular. And let me tell you why. Because for the next few weeks, and I don't know if you're like me, but this is confession time, and I don't expect any judgment from you, okay? But for the next few weeks, every time I write the date, I am going to write it wrong. And a two turns into a three real easy. But a three doesn't turn into a four real easy, so we might be in trouble next year. We might be in somewhere. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. So I don't have to deal with that. Uh, and New Year's resolutions, today's the day. If you don't make them by today, you, uh, you have to pay a late fee for New Year's resolutions. I, was, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know that I have a New Year's resolution yet. I want a New Year's resolution. I feel like that makes, you know, it makes me feel good. If I'm like, this year is going to be the year that I am finally going to learn Japanese or... <laughs> I don't know. I found a notebook not too long ago. This is way off track. Uh, that I, I filled out. It was a college. It was a college journal. And it was 30 things that I want to do before I turn 30. Now, some of you, we were just meeting today. I turned 30 a very long time ago. And I looked at that list of 30 things, and I would probably say about 28 of them. Not even close. <laughs> oh, young 18-year-old me was so idealistic. He just thought the world was our oyster, and in fact, it was not. Um, but, you know, I, I, I like the idea of making resolutions. I like the idea of saying we're going to shoot for a goal. And if we miss it, at least we were shooting for something. If you shoot for nothing, you'll hit it every time. I was, uh, I was in an elevator the other day. And, the, and, and as the doors were about to close, this young man approaches the elevator. And I watch this struggle happen within him, this internal drama just unfold. As he looked at me in the elevator... And then I saw his eyes shoot over here to where I knew the stairway was. And he looked at the elevator and he looked at the stairway. And then he looked back at the elevator and he said, I'll start on Monday. And he got in the elevator. And I thought, you know what? Good for you. Good for you for creating boundaries for yourself. If you guys have your Bibles today, we're going to look in Luke chapter 10. We actually will have some scripture here in church today. Uh, Luke chapter 10, uh, we're, we're talking about being the new. Uh, this is a new year, whether you like it or not, but if this new year is going to be anything uh, actually new, then we've got to choose to be something. It's the old cliche, and I, I don't like cliches, but at the same time, I love cliches because they came, became cliches for being repeatable. And it's if you want something you never had before, you've got to do something you've never done before. If, if, if I want this year to be the same as last year, to be the same as last year, to be the same as last year, then all I have to do is lather, rinse, repeat, and keep doing the same things I've done. But this year, while avoiding the specificity and the legal requirements of making a resolution that is ultimately going to be broken before February, I'm choosing to be more than what I've been. I'm choosing to be the change, to be the new, to be something that I want to see. And I believe that God wants to work in my life in, in many areas, in many, in many areas. 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to push and I'm going to work and I'm going to hustle and I'm going to do so like God has to catch up with me, right? Now, now, now hear me out. I'm not going to try to go rogue on this thing. I'm not going to be like, God, this is my agenda. I'm going to operate in obedience. But what God told me to do, love, serve, pray, give, all these things that God has laid out, I'm going to go ahead and get started on those things. I'm not going to wait for someone to come along and tell me. I'm not going to wait for the door to be open to me. I'm going to say the need is the call in my life. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. But Luke chapter 10 uh, and the Bible says this. Behold, the lawyer stood to put him, Jesus, to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him in verse 26, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, You have answered correctly. Now watch this. This is what Jesus said last. He said, do this and you will live. Do this and you will live. Do this. Jesus didn't want this conversation to end with a philosophical revelation. Jesus did not want this conversation to end from the lawyer's perspective of saying, well, I know what the book says. Because this is only a book until we put it into action. It's only literature until it touches our lives and causes transformation. Uh, there, was, there was an old, uh, you've ever baked bread, it's holiday time, people break, bake stuff, right? You have that little jar of yeast in your thing, right? Yeast is alive, right? It's actually alive. They're, the things that are in that little jar are alive. But you don't see the proof of their life until you put them in the dough and put the dough in the oven and then it rises, right? Because if you don't put the yeast in there, you got crackers for Christmas. And if I ask you for a sandwich and you give it to me on a cracker, oh, my New Year's resolutions are not going to work out so well. But if you want to see a transformation, you've got to apply that to the situation. This is the Word of God. This is a a highly conceptual revelation of literature. But when we apply it to our lives, we discover that this book is alive and it's active and it works in us and through us to do great and wonderful and powerful things that don't only affect our circumstances and our situations and our environment, but affect eternity. It touches the spiritual. It does something greater than what we could do. It's, It's far more than just words printed on a page to the glory of God. But this lawyer, he wasn't going to go out without a fight. See, he desired to justify himself, the Bible says in Luke 29. Desiring to justify himself, refusing to let it go. You ever argue with somebody and you just, they just won't take, the, they just won't let it go? It's like, hey, be like Elsa. Let that junk go. And they're just like, oh, but wait. And it's like, you're wrong. You're you're arguing with Jesus. First off, you don't win when you argue with Jesus. But he's a lawyer, so we're going to give him, you know, it's just part of his DNA. So he, desiring to justify himself, and not even desiring to prove his point, but to justify himself, he said, well, who's my neighbor? So this is the question. He said, you've got to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, yeah, do that. He goes, yeah, but who's my neighbor? All right, Mr. Rogers, I need you to calm down with that. What he's doing is he's creating parameters of expectation. He is the kind of guy that goes on a, like, no-carb diet, and he's like, well, how close can I get to a Twix bar without actually cheating? If I smell the Twix bar, is that, is that cheating? No. If I just, like, lick it a little, if I just take the caramel but not the cookie part, that's good, right? That's fine. Like, how close can I get to the edge? Uh, Some of y'all have told me that sometimes I'll come out here while I'm speaking and I'll get real close. And you get nervous when my feet hang over the edge. You should. I'm awkward. And one wrong, I might get excited one day and just take one wrong step and I won't land right. I will fall and I'll collapse and I'll cry. And then they, they, they have instructions in the back just to play music, turn the lights up, and put have a good week on the screen, because <laughs> we're done. Church is over at that point. It doesn't matter if we're in the middle of it. When I fall off the stage, it's like, good night, everybody. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I'm going to be, I live here now on the floor. 
How close can I get? Or how far can I be and still be in your good graces? Little, little kids do that. You go out with a little, little kid, and they're like, stay close to us. And the little kid will be like, but I'm wandering. I'm looking at things. It's like, stay close. I'm close. I can see you. And the next thing you know, the little kid's like, I'm in. And you got to go, and you're in the grocery store, and you're going up. Where I was my mommy? I don't know. that that I remember being traumatized as a child at Albertson's, the grocery store, and having to go up to the little elevated customer service area in the front and go, ah, my money. And they have to, uh, Albertson's customers, we have a crying little boy here at aisle number one, and we would really love for you to come pick him up. And she did, thank God. But what this man is trying to do is he's trying to create parameters of expectation. He's trying, he is not asking so he can find out who he can serve. He's asking to find out who he doesn't have to serve. And mostly he's asking because he wants to justify himself. He is asking, well, who's my neighbor? So he can say, I'm fine with what I'm doing. I'm already serving the people in my community. I'm already serving the people in my clan. I'm already serving the people who look like me and think like me and act like me. So I'm good. I just need you to say, Jesus, that what I'm doing is fine and that I'm justified. That I'm just fine where I'm at. Jesus will almost never tell you that you're just fine where you're at. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I'm just thinking right now. If Jesus has ever looked at my life and said, hey, you're doing fine. You remember the ha happy days, man, back in the day. Fonzie was, I'm just going to date myself right now as the old man. Fonzie. And he goes and he looks in front of the mirror to comb his hair. And he's like, hey, don't need to touch it. It's already perfect the way it is. If Jesus ever comes up to me and looks at me and goes, hey, I'm going to ask Jesus for some ID because that ain't Jesus. I got too much stuff that Jesus is like, okay, but have you done this? I'm the one that's like, Jesus, look what I did. I did this. And he's like, I love you. I'm so proud of you. I'm going to hang out on my refrigerator. But also this. Why? Because is Jesus just never pleased? Is it, is it just never good enough for Jesus? No, quite the opposite. Jesus loves me so much and knows what I can do with his help and would never be satisfied to leave me down here when I could be up here. Do you want a down here year or do you want an up here year? Come on, church. There is nobody whose battle cry is minimal effort. And that's what this guy was, was doing. He was trying to get away with be justified by being where he was at and not trying to push any further. Jesus responds with a story. And the story is the story of the Good Samaritan. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about that today. But there's a man who was on a journey. He was attacked and left for dead. And all the people that should have helped him didn't help him. And the one guy who, because of racial and, and, and ethnic divides, what was not supposed to even talk to him was the one who helped him. And Jesus tells this story, and, and he asks, the lawyer, again, he said, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? And in verse 37, he said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. Jesus had two back-to-back -back interactions with this lawyer and ended each of the interactions with a call to action. At the first one, he said, do this. In the second one, he said, you go and do this. There is a do that comes along with the calling of God on our life. I love the idea of receiving. I want to come into church and just look, have just God back the truck up of blessing. Just pour it out on me. God, lavish me. God, give me all your favor. God, give me all your glory. God, give me all your thing. And then you know what I realize, though? It's really sounds like I'm more talking about me than I'm talking about he. God, give me, give me, give me. Boy, I am a spoiled brat. I'm a little kid that climbs up on Santa Claus's lap, and I got the list this long, and he know I'm on the naughty list. God, give me this. I want that. Bless me, Lord, I pray. Grant me all the things I need to make it through the day. And God's like, yeah, but what about me? This is about me. You were designed to worship me. You were designed to glorify me. You were designed to be a reflection of my glory. You were designed to be a vessel of my presence. You are a reflection and an image bearer of me. When did this become all about you? And I'm like, you right, God. My encouragement to you in 2023 is to be 
the new. Jesus would challenge you in whatever area that you're coming to him with for your new year. If it's a resolution, if it's some restitution, whatever the thing is that you're coming to Christ with today, today on January 1st, whether you're in this house or you're watching online, Jesus will hear you. He will challenge you and then he will say, go and do. God, I need my 2023 to change. There's stuff that I need to leave behind on that last year's calendar. I'm going to take that last year's calendar. I'm going to fold it up. I'm going to leave it behind. And I'm going to open up a new calendar. This blank is clean to Bula Rasa, fresh slate. And I need new things this year. Because there's some pitfalls that I fell into. There's some times I tripped and scraped up my knee. There's some times that I fell and embarrassed myself or hurt other people. And God, I don't want to fall into those same traps again. I don't want to be that same person again. God, I want something new. And God is telling them, be somebody new. Change the things. Bring in new disciplines. Challenge yourself. How? Well, Jesus said it starts right here in the Word. Find out who I am. And then go and do likewise. We are not just called to claim God's promises we are called to fulfill God's promises. I look down here. I have a, I got, a, I got something uh, just before Christmas. I got a new phone and I don't expect you to celebrate that, but I celebrate it because before I got a new phone, I had an old phone and I mean like old phone. Like, I mean, like if I wanted to, to check my Facebook on my phone, it was like dial up Facebook. It was like, I mean, by dial up, like a rotary phone, like like it was old phone. I had to hand crank it when I wanted to get up in the morning. It would only charge about one-third of the time. This is no joke. Like, I would plug my charger in and go, yeah, not today. <laughs> Boy, I ought to. And we were, uh, we were driving a couple weeks ago. Sheena and I were in the car, and we were driving. And I was trying to use my, my phone to do a thing in this certain area. Uh, and, and, and it wouldn't connect. And Sheena said, this is, this is kind of a bad cell area. I think she was just trying to make me feel good that I had a, a really bad old phone, right? She's like, no, it's, it's not you. It's not you. It, this could happen to anybody. I'm like, it's me. It's my stupid phone. It's my phone. It's not good. It's cracked on the back. And there's like spots on the screen. And it's bad. It still has Internet Explorer on it. It's old. Like my boots up in a day and a half. It doesn't charge. And she's like, no, no, no. We're just in a bad area. So I got this new phone. And we actually went back to the same place last week. And while we're sitting there, I'm like, watch this. New phone, it's a new day, new connection, nothing. <laughs> Told you it was a bad area. It was. It was a bad area. It was a dead zone. The design didn't matter. The newness didn't matter. Because the area was uncovered by service. Our world cannot endure, cannot endure another year with a church on every corner but no signal. Your world cannot endure another year where you don't carry Christ, his love and his joy and his peace and his patience and his kindness and his goodness and his faithfulness and his gentleness and self-control with you wherever you go. We, we have service in here. But what happens out there? How many people will drive by this church every single day and remain exactly at the level that they're at for the next year, unless we carry out what God is doing in here to them. We can talk about it. I can be here with you 52 more times, and we can have the same conversation next year. We ain't gonna have to, thank God, we got 11 more years until we do Christmas uh, and, and New Year's on a Sunday. I love it, but I don't love it that much. I love coming to church to celebrate Jesus' birthday, but I'm way happier when Jesus' birthday is like on a Tuesday. That's <laughs> because then y'all have to decide if you want to open your presents with grandma or come to church. It's way, way better, for, better for all of us. We can talk about this for the next 365 days, the next 52 weeks, but I, but, but I would rather be about it every single day and night. I would rather be about it 
so that when I'm looking for something new in this new year, I don't have to look for it. I can just carry it with me. I can bring it with me. James 1.22 says, be doers of the word, not hearers only deceiving yourself. I, new Year's resolution time. Let's just say me and you say this is the year we're going to get in shape, right? We, 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 we're going to emphasize the love but lose the handles. And we get all of the, we go to the, the, the sharing center down here, we go to the thrift store sharing center, we buy all of the workout DVDs that we can find, man. We got Jane Fonda on VHS, we put it in there, and we're going to jazzercise ourselves. We're going to Richard Simmons sweating with the oldies ourselves, all the way into good health and good shape. And we pop that VHS in our VCR because it's 1993 for whatever reason. And we're ready. We got our mat laid out. We got our wristbands and our headbands on. We're wearing, we got our leg warmers because it's 1983 for some reason. And we pop that thing in there and that music starts and you Richard Simmons come and he's like, all right, everybody, we're going to get in shape. And then I pull up my Ben and Jerry's, pop that up, sit back on the couch, and I just start watching it. This is good. He's good. What kind of change can I expect then? <laughs> what kind of transformation should I expect when I'm watching things happen, but I ain't making things happen? Michael, come on up, man. It's a new year. Let's get out of here. Resolutions are romantic. Anybody can make a choice to say, this is the day that I'm going to get in shape. This is the day I'm going to stop doing this. This is the day I'm going to start doing this. Hmm? It's January 1st. I got the pressure. I just drank some Martinelli sparkling grape juice. I don't drink, right? But I drink the heck out of some grape juice, man. I'm going to tell you on New Year's, it's like I got the bottle in my hand. I'm just throwing that thing back. Bubbly. Enjoy it. Put my little pointy hat on. I watch. Last night, I, I don't know why. I watched. It was, it was Hannah Montana and Dolly Parton. Because that was... What's her name? Not Hannah Montana, but you know. Whatever. I was because it was what I had. I couldn't stream anything else, man. It was like that was what Peacock had on it, right? So I'm like, guess we're watching Dolly Parton and Miley Cyrus for New Year's. Uh, so that was that was the choices I had. All right, we're leaving the last year behind us, friends. We're not speaking of these things again. And you know, in that moment when there's fireworks and, and there's confetti and there's all these things, we make these resolutions and resolutions are romantic. They feel good to make. But when that romance, when that moment, when that feeling, when the newness kind of wears off, all that's left is, is the work. All that's left is the, the walk it out part. Oh, anybody can talk it. I can tell you right now, man, I'm going to learn, uh, you know, five languages this year. I'm going to grow my hair out and get dreads this year. I'm going to work out and get in shape. I'm going to trade my keg in for a six-pack this year. I can tell you all the things I'm going to do. Travel the world. Volunteer. Serve. Get a tattoo. I don't know whatever you want to do. All the things that we say we're going to do. And you know what? When you're just sitting on the couch watching the world go by, you can't expect anything to happen because eventually you've got to put work into it. Eventually, it can't just be talk. It's got to be walk. Remember this. We're not in this thing alone. God is here with us. God is with us. This is the, the, the remnant of Christmas that doesn't leave us. Emmanuel, God is with us. And he shows up every day. And he shows up every day to do the work. Lamentations chapter 3. Man, Lamentations. How often do you go to Lamentations, right? Lamentations 3, 21 through 24. He says, I call this to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Every day Jesus shows up. Every day he's ready to go to work. You need mercy? He's got new mercies every morning. I ain't come to Jesus and be like, yeah, mercy. Well, we have some mercies from last week. They're a little stale. And Jesus, it, 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 like, it's not like me and you, Bill, opening up our refrigerator and pulling out last week's Christmas leftovers and having to find out what smells the last. And it's like, oh, well, I guess this is probably still good if you put enough hot sauce on it. 
Jesus didn't come bring you some nasty old leftover blessings and mercies that need hot sauce to make them palatable. Jesus came to bring you fresh out of the oven, hot, tasty, delicious, butter melting all over top of it blessings. That's the kind of blessing I want. Jesus has those, and they are new every morning. Can I get an amen from the people of God today? Proverbs 23, 18, surely there is a future, and your hope will not be cut off. Your calendar and my calendar both have 364 more days after today. I want new blessings, new mercy, new hope every single day. And God promises that he's going to show up and supply. So if I'm running low, maybe I'm the one who didn't show up today. With a new year, we can count on some things that don't change. The Lord doesn't change. Jesus Christ, Hebrews 13 says, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we love that. We're for that. But some things do. Isaiah 43, God says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do not perceive it. So we can hold on to those things that never change and give thanks to God for things that we can count on, things that are consistent. But we can steer into some new things too. God wants to do a new thing in you. Will you be the new so that he can do that? Will you choose to be something you've never done before, to let God do a work in you that you've never done before? It won't be fun every day. I wish it was fun, but sometimes it's work. Sometimes it's work. Sometimes it's sickening. Sometimes it's heartbreaking. Sometimes you just want to cry or yell or just punch something. Sometimes it doesn't feel encouraging. You might feel like you've, you've walked and walked and walked and you're not any further along than you were. That's not a sign that it's okay to stop. God wants to change you. Not to abandon who he made you to be. He loves who he made you to be. He wants to make who you can be into more like he, a better version, a fully realized version. So what do you need to change? This is a question for you to consider. What do you need to change to make this a, a new year and not just another day? What do you need to leave behind? I believe that all across this room, if we were going to be real, real honest, if we were going to pull out our, like, our unfiltered self, we might say, boy, I could, I could follow Jesus a lot closer. I could be a lot more useful to the kingdom of God and the people that are around me if I would not be this anymore, if I would not do this anymore, if I would not hold on to this anymore, if I would just turn loose of this. What do you need to take upon yourself? There might be some of us that are going, you know what? I don't really read my Bible. I just kind of come in and expect that guy to tell me what it says. Mm. Listen, I've eaten some good meals this week, but I don't expect anything I've eaten to fill your tummy. You better eat yourself. I'll tell you all. Look, I'll Instagram. I'll be like taking pictures. Of, I'll tell you stories. I'll come up here and tell you fun stories about the meals I ate. I went with Pastor Josh and Stephanie. I went with David and Jennifer. We went to get Korean hot pot the other night. It's just expensive soup, but I like it. And we had a great meal, and I still had some of my delicious broth that was left at the end. And I'm like, it's so flavorful. It's so good. I'm full, but I don't care. I just want some. And I ladle it in my bowl from my hot pot, and my bowl was shaped like a heart. It was so sweet. And I took that heart bowl right up here, and I just went, mm, I'm just going to take a sip of it. Somewhere in between, it's delicious, and I want to taste it. And it came from a hot pot. My brain said, I forgot, I didn't know. And I poured basically boiling chicken broth in my mouth hole. And I went, oh God, I'm gonna die. This is the worst. And I had this moment of panic where, you know, like a Warner Brothers cartoon, just my eyes go, and steam comes out of my ears. And what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to spit take and spit this boiling chicken juice on my wife? Like, What's the right move? If I can't switch it to one side or another side, so I just like, ooh, and I swallow it, and it just burn fire the whole way down. Like, I'm dead. This is me. This is just, I'm going to die. But it was a really good meal, and I was really, really full at the end of it because we, we just ate a lot of hot pot. And I tell you that story ten times, and it won't fill your belly once. 
I can tell you this story 10 times. We can do this 52 more times this year. And it won't fill your heart as much as you getting alone and saying, God, teach me. God, speak to me. God, what does your word have to say to me today? This is where your nourishment comes from. I'll tell you where to look. I'll get you a little bit inspired. I might point you in the right direction. But mm, you and me, Hot Pot, that's the name of the place we went to. I'll tell you where we went. I'll tell you what to eat when you get there. But you got to go belly up and eat it. And for the love of God, let it cool first. Pro tip from me to you, inside of my cheeks right now still. I feel like like, like the Joker from the dark night on the inside of my cheeks is like all scarred up. Like it's burnt, hideously deformed inside my mouth. But when I ask you those three questions, what do you need to change to make this a new year? What do you need to leave behind? What do you need to take upon yourself? If your answer is nothing, I'm good, then you might be like that lawyer just trying to justify yourself. But if there is something, will you do it? Will you pray? And my prayer for you is that you will. Will you pray that God helps you to see the need around you every day? Will you pray that God will help you to see the position that he's put you in so that you can do some real good? I pray that he reveals to you what disciplines you're missing and that you need to adopt and incorporate into your life. That you need to, what, what burdens that you need to, to relieve yourself of and to jettison. I love that word, jettison. I, I, wanna, I wanna create a platform for your, for your new year with a, with a time of communion today, I'll ask Pastor Stephanie and Pastor Josh to come down to the front. Every great transformation in our lives comes from doing what the Bible says, of, of coming with confidence to the throne of grace, that we can receive mercy and, and find grace and help in a time of need. That's from, from Hebrews chapter 4. And as they come down here in just a moment, I'm going to invite you to come down. To, to serve yourself some communion. We have the wafer and the juice in this, and then just fill this altar down here as a sign of God. I give this year to you. God, I give my life to you. God, make me the new that this world needs. And if that's you, and that's your prayer, and that's your at least your commitment. Like I don't know what to do, that's okay. But but knowing that you need to do is a great starting point. So I would just ask right where you are if you would just stand so I can pray for you today. I have hot tea in here, and it still hurts. My tender little cheekies. Hot pot. It's hot pot. It's right in the name. It's right in the name. Father God, I just pray that you would speak to our hearts louder than I can speak, louder than, than my stories or, or, or my anecdotes can, can communicate. God, let your truth, let your spirit, let your word touch and penetrate every heart today. God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would just motivate this church, those that are here every week, those that are here for the first time, those that are watching online, God, to commit this year to you in a new way, in an exciting way, God, in an expectant way. God, that we can receive blessing, that we can be a blessing. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. I would invite you at this time, you can just step right out from your seats. Don't push, don't shove. There's plenty for everybody. Make your way down here to the front if you would. They'll serve you, and then just fill in this front area as much as you can. You can come to the center, and we'll share in this communion, the Lord's Supper together, on this, our day one of 2023.
received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Will you take the bread this time? same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As we prepare to go today, I, I want to pray a prayer of blessing over you this new year. And then we are going to affirm and declare this blessing together as the band leads us in this song. But this is a biblical blessing that comes from Numbers chapter 6. And it simply says what we just said. The Lord bless you. The Lord, the God of the universe, he who was and is and is to come, who spoke everything that you've ever experienced, the sun and the moon and the stars, the world into existence with his power of his word. The Lord who loved you so much that he sent his only begotten son to give his life because he'd rather die than be without you. The Lord of all the heavens, of the host of heaven's armies, the Lord bless you. Unpack that word you. Because I don't just mean the corporate collective, just y'all, you. I mean you, right where you are. And you might feel like, I don't just, I can't, I don't want to, I don't deserve that. I know who I am. I know what, what I, the, the Lord don't want to bless me. He might bless everybody else in here who's like way better than I am, but not me. Yeah, you. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't wait for you to get qualified to decide that he wanted to give you more than you could ever contain. So when I say the Lord, I want you to understand the scale of how massive and wonderful it is. The Lord bless you. Right as you are. Just as you are. Right here, right now. The Lord bless you and keep you. I love that. Think of that word, a keep, like a, like a castle keep. You are protected if he's keeping you. You are preserved. You are prioritized. You're treasured. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. I don't want to overemphasize this, and I don't want to take up too much time. I don't want to belabor the point, but understand, that's a serious thing, especially to those who are writing in this time, when no one has seen the Lord, you can't look at the Lord and live. I mean, we're not talking like Jesus with, you know, flowy blouse Jesus walking around and, and you know, birds landing on his hand like he's in a Snow White cartoon, like how we romanticize and idealize, you know, long blue eye, long hair, blue eye Jesus. I mean, I'm talking the full force of the power of the holy God of the universe. Let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you again, holding nothing back. Holding nothing back. I, I wasn't even planning on un unpacking this, but God, I just pray that no word of this would become routine, that no word of this would become mundane, that none of these things would be just glossed over because we've heard it so often. God, you lifting your countenance upon us? Who in here is worthy of that? Not me, not me, not me. And yet, God, you 
make your face shine upon us and you're gracious to us. You lift your countenance upon us and you give us peace. I pray that your new year would be a year of peace. I pray that your new year would be a year of God's perfect presence in your life. Of unmerited blessing. Of uncontainable favor. Of joy. Of a newness. Of a commitment and a dedication. I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you that the Lord would make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. He would lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name above every name, the name by which men are saved, the, the name in which every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord forever and ever, the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We don't only declare that blessing, but we proclaim it and we acknowledge it. Join us as we sing this song, as we bless God, as we bless one another, as our church blesses you in Jesus' name.
Amen. Just affirms, just so be it. Say, ah. on every one of you and I do that but would you if there's somebody that's with you or if, if your spouse is here or your best friend is here or the person that's next to you who, who like you don't even hardly know but like we're all in this together would you grab someone's hand now, it can be weird you can put a hand on a shoulder gently if not just give a knowing glance if like holding hands is strange and and I'd just like for everybody that's in this room to have somebody that can pray for them, to pray over them. Y'all got somebody. Uh, Oliver, will, will you let David stand next to Danny? Will you come up here with Ava? I don't want Ava to stand here alone. Will you come pray with your daughter? Or you can bring all the gales. I don't care. Just a whole unit. Whatever you want to do. A whole flock of gales up here. Uh, David, will you come pray with Philip? I just don't want anybody alone right now. We're all, we're all, everybody's together. You got my hint. Good. <laughs> Michael, will you, just, will you just pray over the people today, man? Is that okay? And if you need to stop playing to do it, that's okay. But will you just pray, pray over all of us? Lead us in praying for one another today. Father, we to go. 
But we got plenty of times in between where we can come together. Uh, I do want to encourage you today, and this is 30 seconds. This Wednesday uh, at the Orlando campus of Sanctuary Church, they're going to be having a service called First Wednesday, a special time of worship and dedication. Uh, I'm going to be over there. I would love to invite you guys to be my guest. Uh, we'll put that information up on our social media, or you can just look up Sanctuary Church Orlando online. It's Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, and uh, I'll be there. I hope you guys will be there, too. Uh, every Saturday during this month, we'll have the sanctuary open at 9 a.m. Uh, for a time of prayer. We'll come in. We'll pray together. We're going to be praying through our prayer first, guys. Uh, there's just a, a wonderful spirit that, that happens when we come together and we believe God for his best. We want to start this year out the right way. And then starting next Sunday, we're going to be entering into 21 days of fasting. We've got information about that online on the Church Center app. Uh, check that out. Begin to think and pray this week about how you want to engage and be a part of it. There are some things in our lives that God has for us that we can't just be it by working harder at it. Sometimes we have to get on our knees. Sometimes we have to fast and pray and seek God and eliminate the other distractions in our lives so that he can get it to us. In fact, that's probably more true than it's not true. So let's make room for God this year. Are you with me? When, I, when it feels like I'm not with you, I need you to say, are you with me? So, so y'all ask me, am I with you? Yes, I am. Hug, handshake, high five, uh, at least 12 people on your way out today. We bless you. We love you. And we want to see you back here Wednesday night in Orlando, uh, Thursday night here for Bible study, Saturday for prayer. Boy, there's a lot going on in January. I ain't mad at it. We will see you then. God bless you. Go with God. And Happy New Year!